All right. I want to welcome everyone to this uh, testimony that Brother Nixon is going to share with us. I want to introduce you to Nixon Kiprop. He's from Kenya, and he's from a community uh, north of Nairobi. And he has uh, much to share with us today. And uh, we want to just ask him a few questions and, and allow him to share his personal testimony and some of the experiences that he's, he's been through. Uh, first of all, before we begin, let's uh, start with a word of prayer. Okay. Dear Father in heaven, we are thankful that we are able to visit with, with Nixon and, and allow him to uh, share his personal testimony and get to know him and the work that he has been doing for your cause there in Kenya. I pray that uh, you would continue to give him wisdom, and we pray that those that listen and, and watch will be inspired uh, by the the mighty way that you are are working in Africa and uh, specifically in in Nixon's area. We ask your blessing on on his ministry continuing forward and also for uh, the people that uh, he is working with and uh, the many groups there that have accepted the truth about the one true God. And we pray these things in your son's name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, you'd like to share with us, first of all, how uh, you came to a saving relationship with Jesus Christ and give us okay. a little, little background of how you, you entered the faith. Okay. Um, it was around the month of April in the year 2013 when I came across a particular testimony by a Nigerian ex-Satanist where in, it, in his testimony explains how the Lord saved him from his, his former service of uh, serving Satan. And um, that testimony really moved me. And um, I decided to give my life to Jesus. I cannot forget that day because it is a day we changed my life. And I remember that particular night when I made my first prayer. It was a night of, um, I can say, it is the greatest of all nights I've had in my life because it was the first time I made my prayer in my life. And uh, I remember I made a very simple prayer to God because uh, up until then I had never prayed and I made my prayer when I was 16 years of age and asked God to forgive me for all the sins I had committed. I also asked him to guide me and lead me in the new journey I was beginning. And I promised to do all in my power through his strength to walk and abide in his ways. And I can testify that for the past nine years as a young man, I have enjoyed the fresh supplies of Christ daily. I have also seen the workings of the Holy Spirit in my life. And I can say that choosing to follow Christ has been the best decision I've ever made in my life. And Christ <clears throat> in my life is something that I treasure above everything else. The cross of Calvary has always been before me. And it has always constrained me to do everything I've done in the service of Christ. Um, after my salvation, many people were shocked, including my parents, and my friends, and everyone. That includes me because I never expected that one time in my life, I would uh, give my life to Jesus. Most especially considering the fact that my parents were non-practicing Christians. My father is an unpracticing Catholic. My mother is an unpracticing Adventist. Mm -hmm. Having that background, I never expected that I would one day have Christ as my personal savior. And um, I also never expected that I would be a Christian for the long I've been one. Because uh, I can say that 
we started the, the journey when we were many, but few are still standing as Christians. And for me, the Lord has known, has honored me much more by entrusting what I consider to be the most solemn duty that can ever be given to the mortals, preaching the three angels' messages in their simplicity and their purity. Amen. Um, can you tell us um, what... Uh, what compelled you to accept the truth about uh, the personality of God? What were some of the evidences that you saw that um, that uh, that made it so you just couldn't you couldn't leave this alone, and that you wanted to dig oh. further into it? I heard about the one true God message uh, first in the year 2016. Each time I could peruse through Facebook, I could see many posts mm -hmm. by many guys there mm -hmm. but uh, i did not embrace the message then because of the manner in which most of the guys were presenting i felt that uh, they were doing it in a combative spirit and that one made me move away from the message then in fact i remember i blocked some of them whom i unblocked after embracing the message but um some of the quotes I had read, one of them I remember was a quote by Elder Loughborough. I first read it in the year 2016, and that one, uh, I can say, it, uh, it remained in my mind for long, and that one was uh, a truth which always convicted me uh, about the controversy within the one uh, the godhead the whole of uh, 2017 i had also some experiences with the message and um, the year 2017 uh, december a friend of mine uh, hinted to me that he had accepted a very radical message and uh, he mentioned some three words uh, some two uh, explanations. One of them, he claimed that uh, um, the third, uh, the third being in rank after Christ was Lucifer, and I remember he shared it from patriarchs and prophets. He was, uh, oh, allow me rephrase it well. He mentioned that Lucifer was second in rank after the Son of God. And uh, for me, by then, I knew that Lucifer was maybe the fourth in rank because uh, the Holy Spirit was the third in rank. And another one, he quoted selected messages whereby um, Sister White says that uh, the pillars of our faith should be preserved for they are what makes us a people. And I think he must have quoted from the book Selected Messages, Volume 1, page 208, paragraph 2, whereby also Sister White urges high church members to stand by the fundamental principles which is based on unquestionable authority. Mm, amen. Those two explanations um, really haunted me for some time because um, still in that year, I loved my church. I was a leader in my church. I was an evangelist. And I knew that it was the only true church of God on earth. And um, um, I, I took no initiative of studying, even after hearing the explanations which were given to me by my friend. I decided that I was going to let the matter alone. Back in on January 20. 18, the same thing came up again in a more forceful way because that same brother had been removed from the ministry he founded. And also I had some elders in some church around Nairobi that they had been disfellowshipped. That one is what constrained me to study on my own because I realized that the matters at hand were deep and they needed my attention. I also knew that uh, silence at such a time was, uh, it was something which it would, it would cost 
my spiritual life, something I had worked hard for about five years uh, by then. So I decided to pray for courage and strength and dared to be a Daniel. I studied a booklet which was shared with me by my friend. And uh, just after reading 20 pages of the book, I was convinced that the issue or the belief was true. And uh, one thing which I can say convinced me the most was how the author of the book I was reading spoke about the sonship of Christ by using the most recited verse, John 3, 16. And I can say that one really subdued my heart. And uh, I now I now understood that Trinity doctrine was a dangerous doctrine for it denied the sonship of Christ. And it is on the sonship of Christ that the love of God is manifested unto us. And um, I realized, I also read in these averages uh, where it says that um, the confession of Peter is the foundation of all spiritual, uh, is the foundation of all spiritual life. And also it is, it is, it is the eternal life for every believer. And also in that same book, Deserve Ages, it says that the, the confession of Peter is the foundation of the faith of every believer. So I decided that I was going to study the matter more, but already I knew that it was true. So I now had to wrestle with the doctrines which I had known to be true because I was once a baptismal teacher for some years and I understood the fundamental belief very well. I also knew of the quotes in evangelism and um, I was really disturbed because um, I knew that there is no time in history when the Lord has contradicted himself. I knew that it is not possible for the Lord during the 19th century to endorse the anti-Trinitarian position of our pioneers and still endorse the Trinitarian position which was brought into the church in the 1980. So I decided to dig deeper with the help of the spirit of the Lord. And I can say by the month of February, I was firmly established on the truth. And um, there is one incident which happened one week after doing my studies. I was invited to some local Sabbath school in my former school. And uh, upon reaching that particular Sabbath school, the baptismal leader requested me to lead them out in their Bible studies on the Godhead. I accepted, but I had a struggle in my mind because I knew uh, whatever they expected me to teach was not what I was going to teach. Right. Um, and um, since I had decided to teach nothing but the truth, and since I had promised my savior that I was going to be faithful and be fearful of no man, I decided to teach the truth as I found it in the Bible. And uh, that landed me into some big trouble because that day, the church pastor, the senior pastor from Nairobi Central was around and other four elders were around. Hmm. Yeah, so after the pastor had finished preaching during the divine service, one leader reported me to the pastor and the elders. Uh, and I was um, I was called, I was summoned, and I was uh, harassed by that pastor. And uh, I remember he asked me what I had taught. And I told him, I have taught that there is only one God in the Bible, hmm. and that he has only one only begotten son, who is Jesus Christ. 
and that they have one spirit, which is the Holy Spirit. Simple Amen. as that. Amen. And um, the elder, the, the, the pastor started quarreling, and one elder told him, I find no error in this young man. I think you are speaking the same thing in different languages. But the pastor said, no, I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so the elder realized that uh, the meeting would result in a confrontation. So he told the pastor we should postpone the meeting. Okay. And uh, since I responded quite well, the pastor uh, requested me to visit him on Sunday, the following day. I never answered him. I just uh, I just kept quiet because I knew I was not going to visit him. But after that incident, I now knew that a battle had begun. And I told uh, I told myself that I was ready for the battle before me. Previously I I had gone through several battles and for this one I was ready. Man. And uh, by that time, I never knew that the battle would result in my uh, my removal from the church membership. I never knew. But then I was ready. One thing that I prayed for uh, to the Lord is that I may be found faithful after the whole thing. That was my prayer because Amen. I never wanted to subject myself into something which I would end up losing my faith hmm. and um, I can testify that after embracing my newly found faith uh, I realized that my life changed uh, I realized that the truth I had embraced was not only knowing about the one true God it had a converting influence upon me Amen. And uh, I realized that I was now having a new Christian experience. And I decided that I was going to share my newly found faith with all my friends. Amen. Can you tell us about how some of the ways that you've been sharing, maybe some experiences uh, that you went through when you shared, uh, shared this with those you knew? Okay, the first persons I shared with were my fellow university students then I was in university then. And um, I was met by fierce opposition. Hmm. And uh, one thing which shocked me was the spirit and the attitude which was manifested to me by my former brethren. I had never thought them of acting in the manner in which they acted. Hmm. And that confirmed to me that I was in a wrong place, but I never knew. And uh, that one also made me to seek uh, for a higher standard in my Christian life so okay. that I would never in any situation manifest the dragon spirit which was manifested by my former brethren. Oh, amen. They, they heard of uh, our faith because... We testified it before them. And uh, I remember when I was summoned by the, the church pastor and the seven elders by them, I never had many words to speak because I knew they were going to misquote me. I took with me the 1872 fundamental principles and read it out to them, the first two fundamental principles, and mm -hmm. kept quiet. <laughs> and... Uh, the pastor told me that he had confirmed that I no longer believe in the SDA fundamental belief. I told him that was right. And I remember uh, he only had one book on the table, and that one was a red book, the SDA church manual. He never had the Bible. Hmm. The Bible. When he opened the church manual, I told him I never believed in it. I told him any just trial for me was uh, using a Bible. And he told me, just leave me, I'm doing my work. I told him, no problem. 
I respect that. But I informed him I never believe in any creed because that is what the original Adventists believed in. Amen. And um, the, uh, the pastor continued with his questionings. And after he ended, uh, after some few weeks, we were informed that we were going to be disfellowshipped. And indeed, some one Sabbath morning, we were disfellowshipped. And uh, after we were disfellowshipped, things were somehow different because we never knew what would follow. We knew that was the only true church of God on earth. We knew that one must never get out of the Seventh-day Adventist church. So for about three months, we tried to fit ourselves into a system that was no longer comfortable with us in it, but it became utterly impossible. Mm. And um, I am thankful because uh, at around August of that year, I received a study of uh, what the true church of God was. And um, I never fully understood. And at around 2019, I think too, it was January. A friend of mine had already received a conviction and he had a study on the true church of God. We did a one week study, and after the study, I now decided that I was going to move out of the church. Mm. It was a radical step for me. I never expected that I would ever move out of uh, the SDA church. But then I realized I was not in the SDA church at all. I was in another counterfeit system under the name SDA church. Yeah. I then decided to enter into the SDA church. And um, we began a small a home church in the university grounds. And uh, we continued till we had our long holidays. And after the long holidays, I returned back home to the northern region of the North, North Rift region of Kenya called Nandi County. And I was invited for a study in a county known as Wasingishu. I was invited to a prayer group. And I did a study on the one true God. And the members were excited to the point of extending the study to three days from Wednesday to Sabbath. On Sabbath, I shared to the whole church. Mm, and everyone man. at that time was happy with it and nearly all the people embraced. Because by then, the Lord had given me a unique way of presenting the gospel. Mm. And... Um, the message on that Sabbath really conquered souls and many accepted. That same prayer group invited me the following week. We did a study on all the fundamental pillars or principles of Adventism. We did a study on what Adventism really is and what Adventism is not. We did a study on what the true church of God is and what the remnant church of God is. And we also looked at um, some of the quotes where Ellen G. White predicted about the great changes in her church and the formation of a new organization. I'm really glad because uh, the Lord gave me that uh, understanding very early preparing me so that I would teach it to others. And after uh, having the study that day, several people embraced the message about the one true God and also entered into the original Adventist church then and moved out of the counterfeit SDA church. That is how our first home church began. And um, it began in a way I never expected. Because after the home church began, uh, I now became 
they are minister by default. I was the only pastor by then, which they knew. So I prayed for the Lord that he may grant me wisdom to nurture that church because I knew any wrong step on my path would lead to all those people perishing. And mm -hmm. surely the Lord worked in a very special way. He granted me wisdom, which even uh, most of the elders acknowledge. It can only come from God. I remember uh, for the two years which I have been nurturing that church and the churches which have re resulted from them, uh, the Lord has really given me that sufficient wisdom from above as he did to Timothy and all the young ministers in the apostolic church. I also saw that wisdom in my ministry. Um, of course, many people questioned um, my ability to be able to lead those churches and because uh, because you're so because you're so young right tell tell yeah. everyone tell everyone how old you are yeah um i am 24 years of age okay. young on june i'll be turning 25 right. and uh, the work i began when around 21 or 22 yeah so and um i could not defend myself when men could bring such charges before me. I told them I never understood or I could never fully explain how I entered into the ministry. I told them the only thing I knew was that the Lord called me and mm -hmm. he has given me all the spiritual graces which are needed for the work he has given me. And I told them, let them judge me by the fruits of my work. Amen. And uh, to this far, they have lived to see that indeed the Lord has been working with me. Even the conference officials, they never expected we'd reach this far with the young boy lead, leading out. And um, I am glad because um, I started out and the Lord brought other elder men as ministers. And we have been helping each other. And uh, I knew that for the Lord to use me, it was a test for some of the Adventists because uh, many people despise age. And for many, it was a test. And uh, many elders have really, many elders have really acknowledged that indeed, it is not with the Lord. It is with the Lord to save with few or many. And uh, in bringing this message, he used the most suitable instrument at that particular time. Amen. And so um, with that being said, you've, it seems that you've caused quite a stir um, in your area. Have What kind of resistance or what kind of response has there been from from the conference because of um, the many people that are accepting the truth because of uh, God working through you and your labors. Okay. Um, it is true that the, the gospel as I have been preaching has really caused um, sleepless nights in many of the conference officials. Because ever since the establishment of Adventism in my area, uh, there have been many offshoot groups, but none has had the power which the conference officials have seen in the One True God movement I have been leading out in my area. At first, they despised me. They knew that the young man was going nowhere. And uh, in about three months, the church was alarmed. And uh, I have been informed that they have held several meetings discussing me. And uh, they have been discussing how to count our message. I was also informed that they have even formed a special unit of doing, dealing with this message alone. 
and uh, I know of a certain minister. His his only job in the conference is to visit uh, the houses of our members and try and persuade them to come back into the 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 church. Wow! And um, he has been working since 2019. In fact, there was a time when I came out of a particular region, the following week, he would be walking the whole week dealing uh, with the, the persons I had previously contacted. And uh, that one also resulted to me having about five meetings discussing with them. And they were trying to persuade me not to preach whatever I was preaching. In some meetings, uh, I have stood up to defend the original belief of Adventism. And I have always clarified to them that my interest is not with the one true God alone. I told them that my heart's desire is to see a reestablishment of the original Adventist faith. Amen. I, I have also con, uh, I have also told them that uh, I will live to ensure that when Christ will come, he will find his church on earth. He will find true Adventists on earth. And that one is what I have been working on to this end. Amen. Amen. And so uh, as you've been, as you've been working and, um, and spreading the truth, not only of the one true God, but of, of original Adventism, what, what evidences have you seen that, that God's hand is actually working and moving in, in your labors? Okay, the, the first evidence that confirmed to me that indeed the Lord was working with us and not uh, just some fanatical movement. Uh, first of all, the Lord confirmed his hand by giving power to our message. As I stated before to you, that when I embraced the message, it, it had a converting influence upon me. And also when those who received this message, they also had a converting influence. I remember one elder who embraced this message once told me that he is a different man hmm. and that this gospel of ours has done a wonderful thing in him and also in his family. He, he narrated to me an incident whereby when he went to when he went home someday, he had to wait for 20 minutes for his wife to uh, finish uh, her prayer. Mm. It was the first Amen. time in their marriage life for him to witness such a thing. And um, another thing which has confirmed that indeed the Lord has been with us is uh, we have had some people who have joined us as a result of uh, angels visiting them. Mm. Yeah. Um, the brother we are now working with, before he joined us, he had a very unique experience where an angel appeared to him. And uh, after the angel appeared to him, he, uh, he received some reports from another, from the conference officials that there was a group in his area teaching that there was no Holy Spirit. Hmm. After hearing the reports, he decided to visit us and hear for himself. He visited us on Sabbath and first of all, he was shocked because uh, we are strict reformers on the Sabbath question. That one was the first thing he noted. By around 9 a.m., he found us in church. 
Hmm. And uh, we had our Sabbath school lesson using the lessons by the pioneers. We also had a devotion before the Sabbath school lesson, and we had a normal divine service and a good Bible study in the afternoon on the one true God, which was in accordance with his request. And after the end of um, the church service, he told us that whatever he had had was different from whatever he had listened to in our studies. And that one changed his mind. It made him doubt all the reports he had heard about us. And he questioned uh, our coming out because he told us, uh, why did you come out of uh, the, the true church of God? Mm -hmm. We told him we were going to inform him of our belief of what the church of God really is. We invited him for another session the following Sabbath. And uh, on Sabbath, he came around with a friend also. We did a study about the church and uh, he was satisfied. He told us that he was going to chew that which he had had and then make up his mind. And indeed, after two weeks, he called me and informed me that he had made a decision to join us formally. And uh, mm. ever since then also, he has been preaching the message about the one true God and all the historic beliefs of Adventism. Um, he began in September and he preached it for three months. Something interesting happened. Um, miraculously, he lost his job in a way which he himself cannot explain. Hmm. But uh, I told him that uh, uh, it was the Lord walking in a special way so that he may fully unite himself with his cause. Because he tried with all his power to revive his business, but all those plans failed. Mm -hmm. And uh, during that period, he no longer even had any time for his job because every morning he would wake up and find messages requesting for a Bible study. He would wake up and receive calls. I remember he worked for about two months supporting himself. And on the third month, I had to intervene and ask the church to support him. And uh, after the three months, he told me that he has been thinking about joining the ministry full time. And uh, indeed, he was convicted that it is time for him to give himself fully into the Lord's work. I told him that surely, it is the Lord that had brought that conviction. And I related to him a Bible study we did in 2018 on how one who has been called in a ministry can be known. And by checking on his labors, for the three months he had worked among us, uh, I can say that he had done some wonderful work for the Lord. Amen. And, uh, he joined me and he has been my uh, he has been my fellow laborer in the course and uh, his coming into our church shook the conference because he was a leading minister on the other side and when okay. he came to our side the conference was really it was really terrified hmm. and i remember after some time they held a meeting in which it was chaired by the president from the division is known as Pastor Guru. And uh, in that meeting, they, they were discussing on how to counter uh, our message because for them it was becoming a fast spreading virus within the church and an mm -hmm. anti antidote was needed. And uh, in that discussion, I was informed that two names 
were discussed at length. And the first one was Nixon, which, was, which is me. And the second mm -hmm. one is Shadrach, which is my friend. Um, uh -huh. The pastor who had been given the job of uh, dealing with us was giving a report on how he had really tried his best to really quench the fire which the Lord has had lighted, but he had not been able to do it. And the, the church resolved on several steps on countering our message. One step was to ensure that every pastor uh, should hold Bible studies on the Trinity and that every church member should understand the position of the church on the Trinity. Another point was that uh, any person who would embrace this truth should be disfellowshipped Mm. And uh, any minister who would embrace this truth should be sacked without following any due processes, which are stated in the, the church manual or whatever leads the church. And wow. uh, the, the third one was to print books on the one on the Trinity, and the fourth one was to use the hand of the state in uh, countering us. Those ones were the resolutions which were made. And uh, interestingly, uh, in that secret meeting, we had one of our own in that meeting. And we are glad he gave us the whole report. And uh, it made us to be prayerful. And also, it made us to be firm and decided on our course of action. Mm. Amen. So they're using, they're planning on using the state. Do you know how uh, they plan to do that? Um, in that meeting, one pastor raised an issue whereby he stated that we had been using their name in our evangelistic missions. And uh, that one created a loophole where they could see was in the courts for using their name. Oh, okay. And uh, of course, the conference is a very powerful entity. It has the power of even uh, bribing the police. We've had on of several instances whereby the courts and the police have been bribed to advance the unjust causes of uh, the conferences. Wow. Yeah. So are there, uh, you've shared with me before um, reports of, of other things that have happened that have uh, demonstrated to you that the Lord's hand is, is at work. Do you want to, do you have any other stories you'd like to share? Okay, I have the third one because I've mentioned two. The third one is an incident which took place at, at around that time when the conference was planning uh, uh, some evil plans against us. Mm -hmm. It was in a camp meeting on the month of January. On Thursday night, we had some thieves who broke into the camp and stole several items, including a phone. And um, I remember that incident almost brought a confusion into our camp. And I requested the, the leaders of the, the church to really uh, let the matter alone until we had completed our camp meeting. So I requested that the matter be set aside first. And um, indeed, after um, on Sunday, after having our baptisms and uh, after contacting, uh, conducting a simple marriage, um, I remember I was called for a meeting whereby you were to discuss about the lost items, primarily the phone. Mm -hmm. And uh, the whole issue was, uh, it wasn't easy because a young man had been blamed, but uh, we had no sufficient evidence to really confirm that he was the, the one who stole it. So I remember I came out of the meeting 
and uh, it was with the intent of uh, praying to God for wisdom on the matter and also calling my fellow friend so that we could handle the issue together. And when I came out of the meeting, I met my friend uh, walking towards me with a phone on his hand and uh, he was looking happy. I asked him about the phone in his hand. He had no idea whose phone it was. I also had no idea because I had never seen the, the, the lost phone. And uh, I told him that it is true that a phone had been stolen. And I think the one he was having was the one I had mentioned, I, I was seeing him having in his hand. Uh, I asked him, how he came to have it. He told me that a young man had brought it to him. And I asked more about the whole thing and he told me that the young man informed him that on Saturday, on Thursday night, they had stolen the items, including the phone. And on Saturday night, something strange happened at midnight because as the young man was sleeping, the room suddenly lighted up. <coughs> Sorry. And um, and some men appeared from nowhere because the child, the door was not opened. And the first question the young man was asked was, um, "Why did you steal the phone?" And the young wow. man, the young man, uh, thought he was dreaming, so he gave no ready answer, and. Uh, he was uh, he was hit, and uh, after he was hit, he now realized that the whole event was real, and mm. he was given some he was given some chastisement for some time, and uh, the young man asked to be forgiven, and um, he was the 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 guys stopped the guys stopped chastising him and mm -hmm. they told him they were leaving him only on one condition that he makes sure he returns the phone the following day and the wow. young man agreed and the guys disappeared and the light disappeared so yes. the the guy who had stolen the phone was really shocked i think he never slept because he also reports that the following day, at uh, 10 a.m., he was still in his bed. Mm. Uh, he had some voice from the, uh, from the next room asking him why he had not returned the phone. It was around 10 a.m. And uh, he jumped from his bed, uh, removed the phone where he had hidden it, and try to get out of his room. And the voice reminded him to return the SIM cards to, his, to the phone he had stolen. Hmm. He returned the SIM cards, loaded the man to the phone, and then also tried to get out of the room. And he was told time was not yet. Wow. At that time, we were still uh, conducting baptism, 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. So he was told that he will be informed of the time and place he was supposed to deliver the phone. At around uh, 6 p.m., it was 5, uh, at around uh, 6, uh, around 5 40s, um, that, uh, that voice again spoke to him and told him that he should be ready for the person he was supposed to give the phone was coming nearer to his place. Hmm. And um, indeed, at that time, my fellow friend who joined us was uh, walking towards some nearby main road, and that main road was near the home of this uh, thief. And uh, when my friend reached near his compound, he was told uh, the person you are supposed to take the phone to is just around the corner, take the phone to him and ensure that the phone reaches the place it is supposed to reach. And um, the young man brought the phone to my friend who was making a call at that time. 
uh, after the call ended he gave it the, uh, he gave the he gave back the phone and explained what had taken place mm. after handing over the phone he ran away we have tried to find him but we've not found him uh, so far um when we found that phone we were really excited we were happy i remember we made some heartfelt prayers of thanksgiving to the lord we really thanked him for he had saved us in a time when we needed him the most and that one also confirmed to us that indeed the lord was with us amen that the work we are doing is his for me as a minister it was um i can say it was one of the happiest moments i've ever had in my ministry to the lord i was really happy because i now knew that the lord indeed was with me amen and um we also have another experience which i'll relate uh involving the same elder i've been speaking about uh the one who was brought by the lord to join me in this work there was a time this friend of mine attended a church service in the mainstream adventist church for a marriage ceremony because before he joined us he had accepted to be one of uh, the persons who are signing the marriage certificates with his friend who was in the system so on that sabbath he was forced to fellowship in the mainstream church and sign that marriage certificate but okay. he had agreed with my friend that after the signing ceremony he would uh, move back or return to his church and um after the signing ceremony he tarried a while to speak with his friends and um, at around 1 pm while speaking with his friends some guy came up to him this guy was wearing the same suit which was worn by those who were conducting their marriages he was tall and dark and uh, he was a stranger to my friend my friend knows nearly everyone in his in his former district and in other neighboring districts but he had never seen this guy another interesting thing was that uh, they did not see where this guy was coming from because mm-hmm. they were sitting in a particular corner mm-hmm. and uh, anyone who would visit them at, in that corner uh, he must have passed through the main gate okay and the main gate was uh, it was far but this guy came from nowhere and he told <laughs> him that it is high time for you to go back to your church uh, to the place you had planned you are going back to hmm. before they came before they came on friday night after welcoming the sabbath with his family they agreed they, that they were only coming for the marriage ceremony and then they were to go back only two people were aware of that agreement the guy and the wife <laughs> but now finally here is another stranger insisting that my friend should go back to the place he had decided that he was going to go back so my friend asked him who are you and the stranger told him don't worry i only have one message for you go back to the place that you had said you are going back to and um, my friend told me that that guy had a commanding voice when mm. he spoke he, when he spoke he was dead silent and mm-hmm. after um, saying those words he went and sat on some corner just parallel and he kept watching on my friend 
fixing his eyes on him without even blinking. So my friend continued with his conversation with another friend of his. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the middle of that conversation, he looked again to the stranger and that guy was still watching them. They mm -hmm. continued with their conversation. And when they looked again to the stranger, he was watching them. So he was, he was really wondering what is happening. And uh, he remembered Job's story and the wife of Lot. And he said, I must go because this one must be some divine being. Mm. He came and narrated the story with us to us. And I told him that one was an angel of the Lord. Amen. Yeah, and I told him, I'm glad that now the Lord is taking it upon himself to call his people out of the system. Because he says, it, the, my friend told me that the church, uh, the, the Sabbath that day was broken. No prayer was made, voodoo songs being sung, women dancing in an uncouth way, and many things were happening in an unchristian way okay. during that Sabbath. And I think that one must have angered the Lord's angel to the point of calling his servant out of it. And um, mm -hmm. that incident confirmed the faith of uh, his wife because at night he asked his wife whether he had told anyone of the agreement they had. Mm -hmm. And the wife confirmed he had told no one. So... That one again was another evidence to my friend and to us that God was really working in a very special way. We also have other incidences of which I cannot exhaust them today. Um, because um, there is a time when my friend, when some guy had his motorcycle stop walking, so that he could have the time of listening to this gospel. He tried to, uh, to start his uh, motorcycle, mm -hmm. but the motorcycle received, uh, refused. But when he turned his motorcycle to the opposite direction, uh, towards where uh, the Bible studies were being conducted, the, Bible the, the, the motorcycle moved and stop <laughs> at the point where the Bible studies were being held. Oh, and well. after the Bible study, the motorcycle agreed to move ahead, the direction <laughs> it had refused to move before. So yeah. uh, I can say that we have had several incidences which have confirmed to us that indeed the Lord has been working. And um, for me, I'm really glad because um, the Lord has really been patient with me. At first, mm. I never thought that this movement was going to grow and continue the years it has continued to this far. But I can testify that indeed um, the Lord has been adding reapers to the field and Amen. confirming to us that he is with us. Amen. Yeah. Well, one of the reasons why um, I wanted to interview you and share, have you share some of your experiences with, uh, with the movement uh, was that I wanted, I wanted them to see and to hear some of the things that you have been sharing with us, uh, because, um, you know, you and I have been communicating for several months, and um, the brethren at PHM saw uh, in you someone that the Lord was truly working through. And um, we had determined that we wanted to support the work there, but we wanted to do it in the right way. And it's taken a long time, but um, you've been patient. And uh, those that you've been working with have been very patient. And we wanted to announce that we've brought you on full time uh, to PHM as we are forming the Seventh-day Church of Revelation. And you've been also involved in that. You were on the naming committee. And so we really appreciate working with you so far. We wanted you to be able to share some of your experiences and get people to uh, allow people to know more about you and why we were so uh, eager to bring you uh, on board and work with you and uh, support the work that you're doing there in Kenya. 
Um, is are there any other things that you want to share before we before we end? Okay, um, one more thing on my side. Mm -hmm. um, I really thank the Lord for working with the leaders in PHM and giving them that conviction that there is need of organizing the church and supporting the needy fields. Because um, for about two years, we had no identity. Mm. And uh, I remember many persons would make some sarcastic remarks about us forcing ourselves upon somebody's name, which is Seventh-day Adventism. And uh, many a times one could ask which church do you belong to, and at times we had to be silent or used or use uh, somebody's uh, name. Mm. And uh, I am glad for the organization which we had. Uh, for me, it was something which, it was going to open up some way for the work here because now we have an identity. Amen. Now we can go and work in a place under a name. Now we can announce to people that our mission is not just located in Kenya, but uh, we are united with friends uh, all over the world in advancing the Lord's course. And um, I am also glad of uh, the support you have mentioned. Uh, for, for about two years when we first began, things were not really easy. Things were not really easy, most especially in terms of uh, finance and uh, the things which we were using. But um, I came to realize that it was in accordance with the Lord's will, because during those years, we understood what patience really meant. We understood what adversity really is. We understood what it meant praying to the Lord to provide for his cause. Because I remember that on very many occasions, we have had our treasuries depleted. We have had no monies in our hands. We've had the work being needed. And the Lord has always provided. Amen. Yeah, I think um, this one can also be a testimony on its own because uh, running the work for about two or three years, having those ministers on uh, no, no dependable, sustainable uh, support. It has been a miracle. It has been a miracle. And uh, there was a point now when uh, things were really working against us. Things were really going hard on us. And uh, that is where yeah. now PHM came in. You came in and... Uh, you supported us and we are thankful. We are thankful. And also I thank the Lord that he brought his support in his time. And I believe that if we continue being faithful, the Lord will continue working in us. Because um, I was reading through the gospel workers and um, Ellen G. White says that uh, the success of any church, the success on any minister depends on his faithfulness. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, I was reading on the Acts of the Apostles, and uh, Sister White was saying that it's not that the Lord is unwilling to grant us his spirit. He only needs us to ready ourselves so that he may pour his spirit in its fullness. And uh, it is my prayer that even in the newly formed movement, we may really sanctify ourselves and really give ourselves to the Lord that he may walk in and through us to Amen. establish his will in this earth. And I believe that the Lord is depending upon us. We might be few. We might not be strong. But as the Lord did with the ancient Israel, I believe that he will be able to do it with us, as he did also with the apostolic church, with the 12 men who shook the world in some few years. I believe with us he can be able to do it if we are willing to walk in his ways. 
Amen. Yeah. And it's, and it's, it's so much more than just PHM because we couldn't, we wouldn't be able to uh, have brought you on or support the work there. If um, the supporters weren't returning a faithful tithe. And so uh, this is a reminder of how important that is. And, and also just a, uh, just to highlight what um, some of the tithe is going towards. And so we really do appreciate you sharing uh, your experiences and your labors and some of the stories about others that are also uh, working uh, for God's cause over there. Yeah, I have uh, forgotten also another thing. Mm -hmm. um, after organization or after, after you released the video on reestablishing Adventism, mm -hmm. uh, I had calls from some one true God churches here in Kenya they wanted to hear more about our faith and they also wanted to join us in the newly formed organization. Amen. One week ago, I was uh, conducting a camp meeting. I was uh, the main speaker there and the, the members there requested that I take them through all the studies which are needful mm. for anyone who wishes to be established on the platform of Adventism. And, uh, and they requested, they requested that, right? They requested, they mm. requested. In fact, there is an elder who is really pushing that uh, that church becomes part of the seventh day church of revelation because um, he has received reports of my work or the Lord's work mm -hmm. in, um, in my region. And uh, he said that he wishes that we uh, they work also as we have done. And um, those groups are three. And uh, I know that the Lord will do something special in their midst and also among others. Amen. Well, we want to thank you for for taking time to uh, give us your testimony and share with you, share with us some of your experiences and uh, the work that uh, that's so important and needful for your area and that's being done. Would you uh, be willing to close us close us out in a prayer? Okay, I'll be willing. Let's pray. Our heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord, for this fire you brought us. We thank you for indeed you've been with us in this interview. If there be anything we have said which has not been in accordance with your divine will, we ask that you may pardon us. It is my prayer, Lord, that you may work out your will in this particular testimony. May our soul be saved after hearing it. And for everything that I have mentioned, O oh Lord, may all happen even to the honor and glory of your holy name. May you please be with the newly formed church, the Seventh-day Church of Revelation. May you please be with the Pioneer and Health Missions and all the churches we've organized together. May you walk amongst them and also walk amongst us that all may truly testify that the Lord of Israel is with his church. Lord, we thank you and we pray that you may continue being with us for it is through the blessed name of our Lord Jesus Christ we do pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Amen.